Wonderful good day, ladies and gentlemen, to the mining news on Commodity TV. Oceana Gold announced excellent results from its Resource Conversion Drill Program 2023 at Varikira Ponga in New Zealand. Key drill intercepts showed 60.5 grams gold over 11 meters, 51 grams gold over 6 meters, nearly 37 grams gold over 8 meters, and over 53 grams gold per ton over 5 meters, with depths ranging from 462 to 519 meters. Varikira Ponga is an important future project for Oceana Gold and some very good forestry steps in the resource conversion here. The new drill results confirmed the presence of high-grade gold and silver mineralization in the East Graben Bean Zone. The drilling and further follow-up drilling support the 2024 pre-feasibility study. Varikiraponga hosts an existing indicated resource of 1.7 million tons, grading 12.3 grams gold per ton for 660,000 ounces gold. Inferred resources total 2.6 million tons or grading 7.8 grams gold per ton for 640,000 ounces gold. Drilling in 2023 on the EG Wien zone showed, for example, 60.5 grams gold per ton and 137 grams silver per ton over 11.1 meters, over 51 grams gold per ton and over 85 grams silver over 5.9 meters and 53 grams gold and 113 grams silver per ton over 5 meters and a particularly blatant 115.5 grams gold per ton and over 316 grams silver per ton over 1.4 meters. Fantastic results, ladies and gentlemen. The easy Wien remains the primary near-term target for drilling, with a focus on resource conversion and extension drilling and approximately 7,700 meters of drilling with two rigs planned for the full year 2023. Permits for the use of a third drill rig for an additional 3,500 meters in 2023 are in the final stages of review. Oceana Gold is a profitable mid-tier gold producer and pays dividends. The company is consistently expanding its organic growth and we rate the stock price target at 5 Canadian dollars. Gold Royalty benefits from an announcement by Agnico Eagle on an update for the Canadian Malatic Complex and the updated internal study for the Odyssey Mine. This allowed the company to report a strong resource conversion and an extension of mine life to 2042. Payable gold production for the Odyssey mine increased by 23%. For gold royalty, an extension of mine life and an increased resource upgrade automatically means more and longer revenue. Within the current mine plan, the 3% NSR covers net metal returns on portions of the Barnard Pit, East Palatic and Odyssey North. Further potential exists with an upgrade and addition of the internal zones, Norris Zone and Midway, where 1.5% royalty on the production profile is available. In addition, positive drill results should increase production in 2023 to 2028 and thus increase royalties for gold royalty. The project itself is very much on schedule. Agnico Eagle expects up to 40,000 tons per day of additional mill capacity at the Canadian Malati complex starting in 2028 as open pit ore and lower grade stockpiles are transitioned into the high grade ore at the Odyssey mine. All of this adds up to strong organic growth at Odyssey. Gold Royalty is enjoying it and the shareholders too. The company is very cheaply valued and we see an initial price target of 3.5 US dollars per share. Alpha Lithium Corporation, which is in a takeover attempt that is way too cheap, announced that they have completed an independent technical report for Salar del Hombre Muerto in Argentina. Hombre Muerto is adjacent to Alpha Lithium Salar Tolija, which is less than 15 kilometers to the northwest. The report was prepared by Dr. Mark King of Groundwater Insight, an expert of lithium brine salars and in particular the Salar del Hombre Muerto. The report follows the company's near-completion detailed vertical electrical sounding, the called VES survey, on the properties which identified several extremely conductive sediment and halide faces compatible with salt-saturated horizons at depths of up to 500 meters. Alpha's extensive experience at Ombre Muerto, combined with the VES results and exploration history of the adjacent properties, make the Ombre Muerto project highly prospective. The company currently owns just over 5,000 hectares in the Ombre Muerto Salar, one of the most significant lithium brine salars in the world. The company's properties are adjacent to those of billion dollar industry leaders such as POSCO and Alchem, both of which are in advanced stages of development, and Livencorp, which has been producing high grade lithium chemicals from its Phoenix project for over two decades. The report recommends an 18 hole exploration program. All rotary drilling will use the downhole magnetic resonance, the BMR equipment, that has also been used with great success at Tolija. 
The objective of the drilling program is to produce a mineral resource report based on the results in approximately 12 to 18 months. Avalitium has received an initial takeover offer which was ridiculously low and will not be accepted. We see a price target of 2.5 to 2.75 Canadian dollars here. Gamma Exploration reported the completion of 2,378 line kilometers of a SkyTem geophysical survey over the Taiyi Nickel Copper Sulfide project in Quebec. Image assessment and processing will now take a few weeks and then bring details for implementation, mapping and sampling program later this summer. Exploration work is also underway at the Muskox Lithium project in the Northwest Territories. We look forward to seeing the results. Please note the disclaimer superimposed now. The stocks discussed are or may be part of the SRC Mining Special Situation Certificate and I'm a shareholder in the companies. Thanks for watching us and bye bye from Switzerland.